But uh, she flatly refused and said, if I have anything, I must go and report her to the police. The truth of the matter is that since 1994, this country has never had a consensus on what kind of macroeconomic policies we Agreed. should have. Agreed. Welcome to the State of the Nation. I'm your host, Mike Sham. And just a reminder that the State of the Nation is moved forward by Pace Car Rental. So if you have any car rental needs, go to a car rental company that's bold enough to sponsor a platform like the State of the Nation and what good partners Pace Car Rental have been. So I would suggest that you go and uh, look up the special offer that's down below and you can even get a special discount as a watcher of the State of the Nation by using our very secret code, which is SONA. Now, as you would all know by now, we have been covering the elections, the forthcoming elections quite closely, and we've spoken to most of the leaders of the parties and uh, discussed their manifestos and discussed their track record and what they would be doing in Parliament. And today, we are very honoured to have one of the oldest statesmen of uh, the new South Africa, one of the people that has been there right from the start, and uh, that is the person that also had the first breakaway party from the ANC in the new South Africa, and that is General Bantu Alamisa. General, welcome to uh, the State of the Nation. Thank you very much. Uh, can I nationalize one of those uh, packages you are offering? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'll return them after the 29th. Yeah, I'm sure, they'll, <laughs> I'm sure they'll have no problem at all with that. No, it's great to be here. Yes. Looking forward to exchange some ideas about our country. Yes. Mm. Now, um, we obviously, the, the, the UDM, the United Democratic Movement, has had a long history in the new South Africa, as I said in the introduction, mm. the first party to actually break away from the ANC in the new South Africa. Not necessarily break away, broke away, break away. You remember that I was expelled. Yeah, yes, you were expelled. So I was in limbo when I started to think of what should I do and then the idea came hmm. that one must start his own party. And there was a lot of interest uh, back in the second democratic e election for your, uh, your new party. Mm -hmm. I remember Rolf Mayer was involved yes, in, the yes, initial, yes, um, yes, in the initial yes. discussions, but he seemed to have taken a different route. Is that right? Yes, uh, he retired early uh, and then concentrated on consulting for peace internationally. And uh, obviously, there was also a pressure from his family, so he had to yes. bow out, yes. And you have, uh, you have fought the good fight. You've been the voice of uh, reason for many, many years. And um, obviously, you, you had your best performance in your first election. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, like we've seen with many uh, um, parties and the, the one that comes to mind at the moment is in Quanto mm. where where mm. you get a lot of publicity mm. in that initial phase and uh, thereafter people start making choices a little bit differently. But uh, there seems to be a renewed interest in the U UDM. Well, of course, uh, it, it's there because at least at the time we launched the UTM, the climate was not conducive for opposition parties in this country. You'll remember yeah. that you still had the illuminaries like Mandela's and others for the ANC, mm. and they introduced the floor crossing legislation, which uh, affected us heavily. But I'm happy with the ascendancy of the UTM. I think we are doing well because we performed well in parliament, notwithstanding the fact that we had two seats. Mm. But when we opted to bet on a wicket of anti-corruption and promoting ethics of good governance, we didn't theorize, but we sat on the offices of the president to say, let's do an inquiry on PIC, Let, let's do an inquiry on that, and uh, today we don't have a speaker, and that's precisely of, because of our work. Yes. Tokazo of SAA, which was us who stopped it as well, because we blew the whistle early. Now, um, you've had a, a wonderful um, record of doing that, and it seems like you have been the safe bet 
to uh, carry these uh, these cases forward. Obviously, whatever the DA said says the ANC are not going to take a listen to, and the speaker generally, by the looks of things, never really regards anything that the DA says as serious until that's why they have to go to court all the time. Mm-hmm. But certainly when you've raised these issues, it's it's got a response. Yes, it's because one needs, uh, gets a good legal advice. For instance, when we opted to go to Concord to force the parliament or speaker to for Concord to grant uh, parliament uh, the right to have a secret ballot, we won that. And again, when she, this current speaker or former speaker, when she was embroiled in the scandal, we said, no, madam, come forward. But at that stage, she was still the Minister of Defense. But uh, she flatly refused and said, if I have anything, I must go and report her to the police. So this is what I did. I merely carried her orders and reported her to the police. Where is she now? She's at home. Mm. Waiting uh, for the police to knock again. Mm -hmm. Now, General Alamisa, there's a thing that's ne- always confused me a little bit because you've been a, a tireless fighter against uh, that kind of corruption. Mm. But then you have been a almost trusty partner of the ANC in some of the coalitions, especially down in the Eastern Cape. Yes. How do you reconcile those two? The UTM uh, partnered with uh, DA in Nelson Mandela Bay. Mm until that, that uh, marriage fell apart. In Gauteng, UTM has been with uh, 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 ANC in uh, the Greater Johannesburg, I think, yes. So what we normally do is we ask the local structures to advise as to who must they partner with so that the services are not interrupted. It has never been about what will be my position or demand this seat and so on. Even in 1990, 20, 2004, we assisted ANC in KwaZulu Natal to ascend to power, but we never demanded any position because we follow what the majority citizens have voted for, the patterns we follow. And I mean, it seems so yeah. much so that, that all of the talk ahead of uh, uh, these coming elections where all the talk is around coalitions yes. is to say that the UDM is a safe bet to tie, throw their lot in with the ANC. The United Democratic Movement uh, it has no preconditions when it comes to forming coalitions because the experience elsewhere where we have done studies, undertook studies in Germany and other countries, you would see the hardline socialists meeting the Christians on the other side and forming a government. So it depends really on the manifesto and also what the other partner is. He prepared, is he or she prepared to accommodate your manifesto? I I I fully understand that. Yes. But surely, uh, given your stance, mm. one of the preconditions. Yes should be a commitment to stamp out corruption. That's fine. I fully agree. But yet you've supported the ANC that have done everything except stamp out corruption. Well, when we, I, might, I must concede on, on that score, but uh, that didn't mean that uh, if I find evidence, I will stop. That's why I have succeeded in following the law rather than be worried about this is ANC, this is DA. If one is one is wrong, it's wrong. So that's that's what we have been doing. If, for instance, the ANC tomorrow, after elections, and the majority citizens of South Africa are still giving them another chance, and they say, Mr. Olomisa, can we talk about coalition? We will table our manifesto. High on the agenda will be this question of corruption. Yeah, that's your number one point. So if they are going to say, no, Mr. Olomisa, we won't do this again and so on, I don't think I will buy it because, one, we still have a president who has to answer some questions. You still have ministers who have been fingered by the Zondo Commission. So those simple questions at least must be addressed and be dealt with, remove them. 
There are a lot of uh, talented South Africans. Yeah. So if that has been your lodestar is to say that um, you're going to go with... Uh, um, any party. Any party. Any then, party. Okay, so let's go back to 2016. Yes. Where you went with the DA-led coalition down in Nelson Mandela Bay. Mm. Uh, what did they do wrong and, and or what did the ANC do right? that made you change horses and give the Nelson Mandela Bay over to the ANC that then went on to steal the place as Crispin Oliver said, steal the city. That is the, that, that one is the worst uh, co uh, uh, corrupt element. Which the UDM was complicit in. That person you are talking about, right. the one who wrote the, the, the book. The, this is the one who facilitated monies of the municipality to go and buy ANC regalia and pamphlets, and I gave that information to Zondo Commission. I don't want to listen, even listen to him. He, he is also featuring in the... Just to, sorry, sorry to interrupt, but just to uh, clarify, he was part of the ANC, wasn't he? Yes. Okay. So he, he, he cannot say, therefore, he is uh, he's going to write a book and, and, uh, and say the city was stolen. It was stolen by the ANC. And he facilitated for that. The evidence is there. I gave it to Zondo yeah. Commission. But so. you also facilitated them getting back into power. No, no, no. I don't, I don't disagree with you. I'm saying, let me answer your first question mm. first. The truth of the matter is that uh, the mayor of, Cape, of uh, Nelson Mandela Bay and his deputy fought against each other. And I suggested that, look, these people are not cooperating with one another. Let us remove both of them so that this project succeeds. But the DA refused. And then uh, Trollip accused uh, uh, Bobani of corruption. I said, look, take him to the council ethics committee or go and report him to the police. And they went and reported him to the police. And uh, that I said, immediately you arrest them or charge him. We will suspend him until his case has been finalized. But he passed on, unfortunately. Yeah, and but his case was... Uh, I the mean, corruption he, and yeah, so on. He, he certainly uh, seemed to fit the mold of, uh, of many of our politicians. That's precisely why I was saying today... Take him to court. Call Could police. That, that's because they were whistleblowers. Said, we are not going to stop you. T charge him. Did you not know he was corrupt? No, no, no. I didn't have any evidence. I asked him. And he said to us, no, he has done nothing wrong. And I mean, the point that I'm getting to, because this is history now. Yes. Right? Uh, the history is that... Uh, uh, the coalition that was led by the DA, this is back in 2016, mm -hmm. collapsed. The ANC took it over. They stole everything that, they, that, that wasn't nailed down. The iron, the iron of the whole thing is that uh, it, is, it was Olomisa who called all the parties. I chaired that session and said, let's compare notes, add our numbers. And we agreed that uh, uh, ANC must be removed in the metros. Greater Johannesburg, East Rand, uh, Eguruleni, Tswane, uh, Nelson Mandela. I chaired that session. Yes. And it produced good results. It did. But unfortunately, some of the big parties tended to be or, ex or appear as if they want to practice a big brother mentality instead of listening to the views of the small parties because we come from different uh, or representing different uh, constituencies. Yeah. If you are not going to allow us to table our manifesto and integrate then bully the small parties then. But unfortunately, the DA continued to, to be caught up in messing up all the coalitions because they bully people. Yeah, now there's two sides to that story, right? Mm. There's two parts. But to you it. are not representing DA. I'm not re representing Next question. No, no, what, I'm, what I want to know <laughs> is that if you decide that the people in this coalition aren't doing, aren't mm. what you want to be involved with, then yes. 
by definition, you're making a, a decision that you like what's on the other side. Yeah, you know, because I mean, I've had this discussion with Kate McKenzie, who keeps mm. on blaming everything on Helen Zilla. And I'm sort That's of saying, right. well, she's not forcing you to vote for the ANC. Yeah. He tries to dress it up like they're forcing her to, him to vote for, and he's so scared of her. So I'm saying, as a fearless corruption buster like yourself, if the DA, I get it, if they were behaving poorly, and that's, that's one I'm, issue, but on the other issues, then there's a support of the ANC. But, but it turned out that DA itself is corrupt. Look at what they've done in Tswane. Twice, they wanted to steal 12 billion. Remember when that mayor was removed? Mm. And then another mayor wanted to take 10 billion away. Mm. He was removed. And uh, there are a lot of their so, councillors. So they acted against the country. Both of them, they are the same ANC and TA okay. for me. Not, okay. No one is better than them. Okay, so because the point that I'm getting to is as we head to this election. I wish when we had go to these elections, that the other opposition parties can do well in order for us to form a government. Mm. But these two forget they are misusing state resources, both of them. And the you, other one is, is doing better, is not uh, brazen, right. it's not arrogant, but all of them, they are the same, those who are in government as we speak. Right. So what you're saying is that... Um, given what's uh, transpired over the last decade, mm. if people that are watching this really like you, a vote for the UDM isn't automatically a vote for the ANC. No, 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 no. Not, it's, Where it's have not you like, opposed it? It's not, it's, not, it's not like that. We have proven that when I organized all opposition parties in 2016 and said, let's Yeah, but take subsequently you, you, you moved to the other side. Yes, we did. There was, there was and you never moved back. There was a reason for that because we wanted services to go to the people. The DA didn't want to cooperate with small parties. So we wouldn't uh, be a uh, hold to ransom because of that. After all, they were not clean as well. And is that the reason why you didn't want to join the multi-party charter talks? Uh, sorry, I didn't want to join the multi-party talks because we had a different approach altogether. I said, we want to work as opposition collectively. But if you are going to say you are not going to work with party X, you are not going to work with party B, you are not honest. Because those people, if the voters give them more votes, they might force you to go and negotiate with them. Mm. That's, how, that's how coalitions work. So, but uh, we wish them good luck. They are back from the moon. Mm -hmm. So they're on the <laughs> ground now. <laughs> right. So, okay. So now we've dealt with that issue because that was one issue yes. that I did want to... Uh, no, 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 no. Obviously, we... when I looked at the manifesto, number one, you've got good governance. Mm -hmm. And, you know, all that goes off like a big neon sign in my mind is mm. Eastern Cape and uh, Mongomeli, mm -hmm. Bobani, you know don't want to speak ill of people that are no longer here but yeah. but just to but, uh, I, but now for issue. the first time i'm sure you hear for the first time that the da is not as clean as it uh, no to, look you the, you hear that regularly <laughs> yes. uh, you know you hear that it's from the patriotic alliance you hear that from a lot of people and uh i have no doubt that mm. uh that everybody has nah. uh it's it must be it must be too tempting to not uh, stick your hand in the till, right? But uh, okay. let's let's move forward. Uh, let's talk about the economy. Yes. Because that, after good governance, is mm. your second most important issue. Yes. South Africa sits with an absolute crisis mm. Mm. Of, mm. Uh, of a lack of economic growth and unemployment, mm. um, uh, which is catastrophic. Mm. And it's ruining the lives of the future mm. of mm. our country. Young mm. people mm. can't get jobs. The economy is shrinking jobs. Just recently, we hear about more international companies that want to withdraw from mm. South Africa. Mm. Mm. What are we doing wrong and what is your solution? The truth of the matter is that since 1994, this country has never had a consensus on what kind of macroeconomic policies we Agreed. should have. Agree. We should have. You will recall that uh, all the policies from GEAR, RTP GEAR, yeah. the tripartite alliance partners would uh, shoot down yeah. those policies. And ANC, because it 
valued their votes more than defending their positions. So, therefore, this country, I, I would su su suggest that it's not too late for us immediately after elections to go into a national dialogue. High on the agenda should be our economy. And our economy, we talk about land and property. And also, we need to come up with a program to invest more on South Africans as opposed to getting more goods from outside the country. Yes, we are members of the WTO. And uh, as a result of that, many countries are just dumping in this country. But I think we can do better to tighten our borders. It's just that there is no rule of law in South Africa. It's a free for all. And this affects the economy and also the investors, both from inside and outside, are scared to put their money here because of uncertainty in terms of policies and also from security point of view. It's worse now that the energy part has also added uh, another dimension in this problem. Now, um, obviously, this I, I couldn't agree with you more. You know, uh, it seems to me that what you've got is uh, sometimes a policy is market friendly mm -hmm. and it gets mm -hmm. undone by the next policy that is market unfriendly. Mm -hmm. uh, the ANC has, I think it's been a bit of a practical joke. Uh, I'm sure they have a bit of a giggle afterwards. We've had now three, in fact, four ministers of trade and industry in mm -hmm. a row that mm -hmm. hate trade and hate industry. Right, mm -hmm. you, people who are committed to not promoting trade and industry. Ibrahim Patel obviously is a disaster. Before him, he had Rob Davies. Yeah, we, we, all of them. All of them. Uh, that's you, what, that's it's what, rogues gallery when it comes to. Uh, that's like why you couldn't have had worse people for those positions. That's why we don't have industrial policy and Absolutely. employment policy today. Thirty years after we obtain our freedom, look at the embarrassing setup where you see fifty-seven million blacks queuing to get jobs from the companies which are owned by a tiny minority white population. We have not come up with an, in, an investment, I mean, industrial policy, where we can say these kids now, black South Africans, have, a bit, have got skills. How do we assist them to kickstart the, the economy or become wealth creators. We need to find a solution to invest in them so that they can create jobs for other people. Okay, so let's start off with uh, the incoherent uh, economic policy. Mm -hmm. uh, where, what is your stance on economic policy? Which way should we go? You know, we've obviously got uh, the EFF saying, well, let's be like Venezuela and Cuba. That's in their manifesto, no, right? Uh, that is in their manifesto. And uh, you've got the DA saying, well, you know, let's do what the West does. Where does the UDM stand? Unfortunately, I'm not uh, 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 going to lie to you. Both socialism as well as capitalism have to work hand in hand. Right. If you go to China now or Russia, you would think that you would, be amazed when you see General Motors in their streets, the Kentuckys of this world, the McDonald's. But where the trick is, they come, sometimes they say 49% for you as an investor, 51 they hold it for the citizens of China or Russia. So it's that kind of a model which we need to look into when it comes to partnering. It cannot be a wholesale socialism because you have to bake the cake and and then once the cake is much as is, 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 is ready and then you you spread it but so far we have been consumers yeah and of that a very cake, old cake yes and of the old cake and that cake is almost finished yes that's why now you will find that this now is uh, leading to a instability in the country where people are saying if I don't have something to eat I will go and get it next door okay so um, we we obviously need that 
uh, that consensus, partnership. Yeah, yes. a partnership. Mm. Uh, where does the UDM stand on property rights? Property rights uh, is a very tricky one, that one, because your property is your property. So I cannot uh, support a situation where I'm going to say, let's take your property and give it to X. It doesn't work like that. The issue of land and property, they are both intertwined. So we need to find a solution on land and property. For instance, I'll make an example. In 1976, K. Dima Tanzima uh, led Transkai to be independent. But what he did was good because he gave the land in the CPT areas and suburbs to the Transkayans. But the state helped them in that the Pretoria had to pay the other path and then the people bought those properties, most of them at cost because they were old properties. It worked, but you need a, a kind of a model where you would say, here is Johannesburg. It's become it's in ruins. Government, let's partner with the, with the South Africans. I will renovate this, and then I will let you buy the properties. In that way, you will be integrating the people of, of Gauteng properly. So it's not a one method you can use. There are many. So, for example, RDP houses, you would give a title deed. Yes, RTP houses, you will give uh, title deeds, but uh, the quality of those houses, um, I've got a problem with them. I thought they would do better than the old regime, apartheid government, because the forums which were built by apartheid are still strong today. And when we were campaigning for the ANC in the 1993, <coughs> we were saying we're going to build... Uh, Better houses, not these match boxes. Mm. They are worse off. I don't know whether you say this is a title deed. How big is this land? Is it 10 by 10 or 50 by 50? So uh, we, we need to discuss some of these issues. There's a lot to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> a whole lot of people that don't like talking to each other. Um, where do what do you think of the policies of uh, BEE affirmative action? BEE was, uh, when it was mooted, uh, it, it was, uh, it, everybody hoped that it would work. But little did we know that it was a, a, po a policy for the elite uh, of the ruling party, not even all the black South Africans from PAC, Azapo, and others, but it merely empowered a few black individuals from the ANC. Guess what? They used the pensions monies through PIC in doing that. Now, they also use the, 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 the UIF funds, which is, which is cruelty. You can't live on somebody's sweat because those monies have been invested to make sure that the families will be sustained of those people who work for the state. But these guys would say, no, this money must be utilized, give it to the comrades. So in other words, P PIC was used as a picky bank for, for them. So the, U the UTM's position, therefore, is that uh, the BEE needs to be reviewed, the policy, but when you talk about BE, we're not saying it must be removed, but it must be cascaded properly to the small business, up to the lowest level. When somebody wants to start his or her business, the first thing he struggles with is access to capital. What should we be doing to help those people? South African government can currently cannot be uh, worse off than the homelands because in Transkai we had a fund for small businesses and also for Transkai Development Corporation and so on. But here people are struggling. So the BE, Black Economic Empowerment, 
it must be cascaded down. But stop using pensions and UIF monies for that. And white business, what should happen to white business? The white business must continue to work with the government, create job opportunities, train people. For a diminishing shareholding. Yeah, they must, they must, but unfortunately, the white businesses, what I've noticed, uh, they have delisted in South Africa, the big companies, and uh, that's where I began to fail to understand why Anglo Americans would disinvest in South Africa and others delisted and go away at the early stages. And I remember they were pushing the state to. To, 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 to transform the foreign exchange policies and so on so that they can take their monies out. I thought they were going to bring more dollars. Instead, the dollars we have seen come and stay under the mattresses of the big bosses. Yeah, or in the sofas. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, there's a lot of discussion that needs to take place. There, is a, there is a lot, especially, uh, but the question of trust... That's the word which we must try and uh, bring it back because there's a lot of mistrust. Yep, there is a hell of a lot of mistrust on both sides of the aisle, I think yeah. one could say. Let's uh, look at some of the key issues. Um, mm. Safety and security. Mm -hmm. You're a security guy. Everybody knows you as, uh, as a former military man, mm -hmm. right? South Africa seems to be at an absolute crisis point when it comes to security in a, in the broader sense? I'm more worried about the involvement of neighboring countries in our security problems. Uh, you are aware that most of the cash heists and so on are done by people from neighboring countries in cahoots with some few South Africans. I think the first thing would be for South African government to have a summit of SADC countries and say there are things which we need to cooperate with. We cannot avoid people moving uh, up and down. It's there. We will never stop them. But let us do it properly. And uh, also that if someone from South Africa goes to Zimbabwe or Mozambique and cause trouble, and come and take refuge back home, we must cooperate with the policemen of Zimbabwe and assist them, vice versa. So that is a starting point. Secondly, here at home, I think we need to look at the way we recruit our security forces. I'm not uh, happy with the outlook of our police, outlook of the soldiers. There seem to be no discipline, even if you look at how they dress up, you said, no, this is not on. But the budget for law enforcement agencies, especially defense, has been depleted in the past 30 years. We may have to relook at that, but it must be accompanied by training. But who is going to train our police and defense? We have bilateral agreements with many countries who have traveled through this route before. I think it's time that we should send some of our would-be commanders uh, to go and be trained there, do staff courses and planning. When you look at some of the generals and the police, you question and say, I wonder whether he has done any, even a junior staff course where he is taught how to manage his planning, his or her planning cycle. Thirdly, the issue of crime is not going to be an is a responsibility of the state only. But the way of doing that, you have to invest more on crime intelligence. That means you gather and forget information even before a thing has happened. So far, it looks like uh, we are in a crisis. The security forces of South Africa have no intelligence. I wonder how many times does a president get a prefix by from his security cluster? I doubt. Yeah. 
And linked with that, uh, one of the issues you, you do speak about international relations. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's easy to gloss over that as a mm. as a minor point, but a lot of our security problems stem from our international relations. Yes, mm. uh, the holding hands with uh, with Robert Mugabe, the mm. support of what he did that has you know created some economic problems in Zimbabwe. Mm-hmm. Where does the UDM stand on uh, on countries around us? To what degree should we throw our weight around? Well, I think uh, the proposal I made that uh, in our manifesto that uh, the SADC countries should converge under one roof. For instance, we can target three areas and say we need to cooperate. Call it as a quasi-federal system of SADC countries. We talk about climate change, the environment, of course, that's under environment. Then we cooperate on issues related to security. Later on, we may even get serious and talk about having one currency for SADA countries. And later, it will be foreign policy. So those are the key. And those areas, you are not going to interfere in their elections and whether this is a kingdom or not. One wants to be a president, they know. But there are key areas which we can formalize them and have joint legislations. And what do we do as the big fish at the moment in the region? That right? the South Africa is the one, must, South Africa must lead. Okay, so what do we do about countries that behave really poorly? What should we do, in, in your opinion? Unfortunately, you can no longer use military. In the past, I would say, no, just take them over and, and put them in, uh, and have another province. Mm. No. <laughs> so the best way is to sit down, guys, according to our analysis of, this, in this, of the situation. South Africa's point of view, this is what we are proposing. From South Africa's point of view, this is what we are proposing. Let hear, let's hear them also give, uh, giving their proposal. Okay. Because, because their people are working here. Yeah. They are contributing to the economy of South Africa. But in also a way. costing. They're also, also cost, costly. Look at the health services, for instance. Which brings us to the question of healthcare, <laughs> right? <laughs> Obviously, um, we've got uh, President Ramaphosa running around looking for a pen. You said, yeah, to sign the, to NHI. Sign the NHI, um, which seems to be um, not necessarily well thought out as to how it's going to be funded and it was going to get challenged like crazy in court because there seems to be uh, problems with the constitutionality my, of it. My main worry there is that uh, we are having a brain drainage as a result mm. of this. A lot of doctors uh, are opting to go out Uh, to other countries, nurses and so on. I think Cyril Ramaphosa is uh, worried to to sign this uh, NHI. To say he's looking for a pen is clear because the parliament has approved this and it cannot be him now alone who was, who's going to read this. Yes, on paper they say it must be him who signed. He says, I'm still looking at it. There's no such. I think he's, got, he's bombarded by a number of representations, which would mean, if I were in his boots, before I send it back to Parliament, I would call everyone in that industry and say, can you convince me why must I not sign this? Why must I sign this bill? Because it's clear, especially from the National Treasury's point of view, I suspect that the end, this Treasury General or Treasurer, Department of Treasury, have said, go slow. Yes. We don't have money. The Minister of Finance had said it publicly. Mm. So maybe we would have to phase in to this, introduce this in phases. What yeah. kind of phases at this stage? I don't know. But we do know that South Africa has quite a quite a big national health system already mm. that is mm. run very poorly. Mm-hmm. 
hard to see uh, how running more of it will make them run it better. Well, of course, uh, is there anything which is running better in all the 28 state departments? Not because, in the state because, departments, because, but certainly in the private sector. Because everything seems to be look, looking south. So we, we, we may, it may happen that we don't need an NHI as it is, but we need to improve the quality of service to our people yeah. and the facilities and the infrastructure. That is the start. Yes. Now, did you, as a matter of interest, did you vote in favor of the NHI? No, I was not even there. I was busy with uh, the ex-mine workers mm -hmm. and the uh, ex-pensioners who wants their monies. But would you have supported the, the bill? I don't think uh, I would have opposed it in principle, no. So you would have voted for it even though it's not workable? Uh, no, it has not yet been tested, remember? What has been painted to us, they said it will improve the situation. But as an experienced person, I'm telling you that the main problem is that there is no administration in the ANC government. Yeah. Uh, they don't have in all departments. General, I'm confused because now on a couple of issues, you've said one thing and then you've said that you would vote differently. You said that you're in for clean governance, but then you support But, the but who told you that NHI is, is not clean? No, nobody said that, but you said that it's going to be very difficult as it is penned, mm -hmm. that it's not workable, right? Yeah. But, so why uh, vote for it? Well, the, 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 we must not forget that the the, the poor of people of South Africa, black and white, they need better health system. For sure. So when it was presented to us, it was said it's going to improve the situation. So I cannot be opposed to that because the reality on the ground, you go to the squatting camps, you see whites there, you see colored, see blacks living in the squalor, and those people once need a proper health system. That's a matter of principle. Mm. Right, let's move on to part of the reason that those people are sitting in squatter camps and just in closing <laughs> is because we've got a desperately poor education system that is not producing what the country needs. Mm. Uh, that can't be disputed because the numbers tell you if, we, it was, if it was producing what the country needed, we wouldn't be sitting in the economic quagmire that we are. What where does the UDM stand on education? Well, we are for the reviewal of our education system. We need to agree as a country on what kind of education pillars must we have. Right now, we seem to be lost. Uh, I remember myself, I launched a project. I was part of a project called Tutuga. We launched it in 2001 and we, I asked Matiba to come and launch it. It was intended to produce more black chartered accountants. Today that project has produced over 2,000 black chartered accountants. Over 50% is women. And some of them have got their own firms. Others are now auditors. And many people in London thank you for that because yes. that's where many of them are. Yes. Now we need to have education system which would produce people invest in artisans in engineering so that people can stand on their own and we may have to come up with a national fund for to kickstart their businesses so that uh, they they trade so unfortunately the car the current education system don't produce the skills required uh, for some of the industries. But unfortunately, even for those who have been skilled in the black communities and white communities, they don't get jobs. That means no one is prepared or is willing to come and invest in the country or even those who have money inside South Africa, they are not willing to invest. We have already talked about crime, uncertainty on policy formulations and so on. Well, it sounds like uh, the UDM is worth considering. Uh, yeah. Some experience. General Bantu Alamisa has been a voice of reason in Parliament, has held the government to account. And many of the actions that we've seen in South Africa 
would not have taken place if it wasn't for the standing of General Alamisa and his stand against some of the excesses of government. General Bantu Alamisa, thank you so much for coming here on the State of the Nation. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's, Sona. It's been wonderful to have you. Yeah, to everybody that's, uh, that's joined us today, thank you so much. Go to Pace Car Rental. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you again on the State of the Nation. Thank you.